I did my best to approximate the Domino's India's stuffed cheesy bread. If you're Indian, you'll find this is a pretty close approximation to Domino's stuffed cheesy bread. If you're not Indian, try it. You might like it. It's something different. So here I have two cups of warm water. I popped it in the microwave for like 20 seconds. And then I removed two tablespoons of the water. Later on, we will replace those two tablespoons with two tablespoons of this heavy cream, but we're not going to do that just yet. And I'll tell you why in a moment. Next, we have two teaspoons of sugar and one teaspoon of Fleischmann's active dry yeast. You can use um, any brand of active dry, just make sure it's active dry and not the rapid rise. As you can see, I buy a big container of yeast because I do use it a lot. If you don't use yeast very often, I recommend that you buy the individual packets. Um, I also have two cups of bread flour. I like the King Arthur Baking Company brand because it's an ethically run company and it's an American company. Um, these days, many uh, like companies make their own bread flour. Walmart has the Great Value brand bread flour, so you can get it a lot cheaper if this is out of your price range. Yes, you can use regular all-purpose flour or plain flour um, if that's all that you have, but this will get you a slightly better result. Domino's in India does use bread flour. It has a slightly higher protein content in it. All right, then we're also going to add one teaspoon of Italian mixed herbs. Um, also half a teaspoon of garlic powder and half a teaspoon of salt. We'll also need two tablespoons of canola oil. All right, in a medium mixing bowl, I'm adding my warm water along with the sugar and the yeast. Now, our yeast needs to come alive. It had been refrigerated in this case. If you use the packet, you didn't need to refrigerate it, but it still needs to wake up and come alive and bloom. You should see a little bit of foaminess, some bubbles, a yeasty smell. If you don't find any of that, it means that your yeast is dead and you would need to start over with some live yeast. Now, if we had added the cream to the water already, we would have had two problems. One, the fat in the cream would retard the yeast's ability to wake up. So we wouldn't know if the yeast is alive for a lot longer. And also, if indeed the yeast is dead, we've now not just wasted water and the dead yeast, which we really can't call that a waste, but we would have also wasted some heavy cream. So this limits our waste. Um, after five minutes, I could tell that my um, yeast was foaming and it was definitely alive. And so I added my flour, my seasonings, my uh, heavy cream, and the oil. I have no idea why I was still shaking the spoon so long like that. I think I was distracted. <laughs> All right, so I just mixed this up with the spoon. Um, this is going to create a fairly sticky dough, so don't worry that it never becomes totally smooth and elastic. I mixed it up. I covered the bowl with a clean tea towel. You could also cover it with plastic wrap. And I let it sit for about five minutes. Then I came back to it at five minutes and I started to mix again. It's going to take a total of about, oh two to three minutes, just mixing it. I just mixed it with a spoon. I didn't even get my hands in there at all. And as you can see, it's a pretty sticky dough. There really isn't any like flour left on the sides of the bowl. As we move the dough around, it catches any remaining um, bits of flour. 
And so after two or three minutes of stirring, um, I'm just going to pour in two teaspoons more of the canola oil, smear it around the bowl, and that way the bowl gets coated and so does every bit of the, the dough. And we're just going to cover that again with our clean tea towel. And let that rise for about two hours. Now, alternatively, if you're not ready to make this now, what you can do is let it rise for two hours, then put it in the fridge for up to 12 hours. At that point, it would need yet another hour to two hours outside to get back to room temperature though which is what I did. I put it in the refrigerator overnight. Once I was ready to remove it from the fridge, and it, like I said, it will need that hour to the bowl and the dough to reach room temperature again, I took an entire stick of butter out of the fridge. I chopped it into chunks. And when you, the, the finer the chunks that you chop your butter into, the faster it'll cool to room temperature, and, or warm up, I should say. So you're now seeing the butter after it's been sitting at room temperature for an hour. I mixed it with half a teaspoon of, again, the Italian herbs, half a teaspoon of the garlic powder, and we don't need any salt in this case because I did use salted butter. Remember that the dough also had salt in it, so we really have to be mindful of our salt intake. A lot of times fast food is so good um, because it's just loaded up with salt and sugar. So we really have to be careful about that. All right, next I've added eight ounces of fresh, fresh mozz. I've added six ounces of Munster. And I do recommend that you use Munster. And I'll tell you why in a moment. And then I used three ears of, um, corn. Now, if you wanted to use, um, canned corn. You could use about a can and a half of, of a fresh corn, a sweet corn, excuse me. Uh, the reason I like to use Munster and not just mozzarella, which is what a lot of um, pizza places in India also do, is that the mozz gives you a great stretch, but it doesn't have a ton of flavor in it. So by adding Munster, you get a little bit more cheese flavor. All right, I divided these, uh, the doughs into three e even balls. I just eyeballed it. You don't need a scale. And I just used my um, paratha um, roller. I forget the word for this. Um, and I start to put my, my butter here. I'm making this into, um, it's more or less um, a size of a larger paratha fold it over, um, divide up your mix into about thirds. Now I did use my knife to very gently press into the dough and that's going to serve two purposes. Um, it's going to enable a more even cut when I want to cut it and I, I won't even have to cut it with like a knife. I'll just be able to use my hands if I want to just tear it apart. And also it'll help steam to escape. Um, you can use a cookie sheet. I don't recommend that though because when the butter seeps out, it can it might get a little drippy in your oven. I like to use something with a little bit more of sides. And so each of these um, doughs will get its own. Um, I just like to use an eight inch uh, cake pan because it has you know a little bit more walls on there. I had preheated my oven for thirty five to forty minutes. At 375, these went in at 27 minutes each, with the last two minutes being uh, with the broiler function. I probably could have um, taken it another minute or two even under the broiler. And this is just right out of the oven. I should have waited like a minute or two for the cheese to set up because it was really bubbly and melty in there. Um, but it was, this bread is really, really good. A word about fast food, cheesy bread, pizzas. I think that if you're going to order Domino's, it should be pizza or cheesy bread or breadsticks. I don't, I just don't agree with all of that food. It's, it's not good for us. Um, we ate that cheesy bread along with a plain green salad. Um, I just feel that 
with the cheesy bread with pizza and um whatever sweets they have it's just overkill you know you're you're already indulging yourself to eat any item that is covered in butter and cheese so think carefully um about what and how and how much you eat and um i hope that you try this certainly it's a big savings compared to um the cost of ordering dominoes and even if it isn't you get to control um, the ingredients and especially the salt and sugar.